parting with this much money other than buying a house. This is about as much money as you can, you can, you know, put down on something. You know, we're, we're, we're all, we're sending in three separate payments. We're all sending our, our, our money to this numbered Swiss bank account. So Richie calls me up. He's like, I did it. I said, you did what, Richie? I sent my money. I was like, what money? He's like, I sent the money for, for Titanic to the numbered Swiss bank account to the Russians. That's the thing about about wreck diving. And, and, and it, it's like it is it is not just put the rubber suit on, jump in the water, don't hold your breath. It, it is the, the, the diving part is is important and we want to stay longer. We want to go deeper. We want to do all that stuff. But the shipwrecks, the, we, we just have this connection. And and th so the thing is, we want we want to learn more. And 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 that is the that is the exact reason why, you know, more than 100 years after the sinking of Titanic, People love Titanic. Everybody thinks they know the Titanic and have that has that emotional connection to it, don't they? I I, I, w I did some uh, motorcycling again with Brits. I don't know what it what the deal is, but I, I'm motorcycling from from Kathmandu uh, across eastern Nepal uh, through Sikkim and West Bengal and India and and into Bhutan. And we we are in in Darjeeling in the tea dish in the middle of nowhere, like. Uh, little tiny i wouldn't even call it a town but it's like dirt road in dirt road out nearby they had a river that was you know but because i'm because i'm traveling you know how you brits get if you don't get tea time you right. know hey. you know yeah yeah no it's like oh and we're in Dar darjeeling it's like this is, <laughs> this is the mothership for tea <laughs> so we're you know it's like oh we got to stop for tea okay we stopped. It's funny you should mention that, John. We just got to stop for a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's middle of nowhere. A little, a little, a little place. So we stopped to get tea. What's on the wall? Poster. Leonardo DiCaprio. Kate Winslet. Titanic. You could not be further from the North Atlantic if you tried. <laughs> and, and and yet Titanic was something these people the the the, the story, the concept, the idea, the history was something they related to. Is that where you got the idea to go and visit? Because Craig's um, got two conflicting stories, haven't you? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the first story is that at that moment you pointed up at that picture and said, that's my next dive. Uh, and and the second, no, but that sounds awful, awesome. I may have to steal that. Um, Doesn't that sound great? You've got to use that one, John. <laughs> the, the the second story and the one that I believe is the truth is when you met um, the the uh, lawyer that that supposedly uh, uh, David Concanon. Uh, yeah. that had some information that was of interest to you. Well, it, it, uh, you know, I, I already knew David Concanon, and and we we dealt with the. Uh, a couple of different things. So, so I was literally driving somewhere. I was in my in my truck going. I I, I don't remember where. But I'm talking to him on the phone, and, and he and he's like, you know, we could, you know, I think you could put something together for the big T. And I was like, the Brits are coming. <laughs> tea, tea again. Cup of tea. <laughs> what's what's the big T? <laughs> and he's he's like Titanic. You know Titanic. And I was like, you know what? That's a brilliant. That's a that's a brilliant idea. There's no reason why we couldn't do that. At that point, I was doing a lot of work for for television, and it's like you know we could. Number one, David uh, uh, had a, a compelling story. You know, he he was down there on the rack. Uh, he saw something. He didn't have the chance to to uh, investigate it further. And, and we st we just said, and I say we, we Richie Kohler and and uh, Kirk Wolfinger. But we we tried selling it to TV as and you know we 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 were selling it as a TV project. Kirk, Kirk was your producer on the show, was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and was 
it, you know, when I, at that point I was living in, up in Maine. So, you know, I mean, we were neighbors and all that kind of stuff, but it's like, we put, the, we put the whole thing together and, and the TV guys were like, we're really interested if you find something. And by the way, uh, uh, yeah, but we're not, we're not. Well, you, will, you will find something. You'll find the Titanic. Yeah. Well, 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 you know, it's like, we're not, we're not looking to do something now. We're not signing nothing. We're not giving you any money or anything else. So Kirk and Richie and I all paid for it. And, and but, you know. But this I, is not a, a cheap operation without the TV funding. I mean, this is hundreds of grand to put this sort of thing together. It, it, it was, it was over. It was like $350,000 to start. I mean, just, just for the boat, we had, we had to pay for the boat in advance. And, and so, uh, you know, it, it's like, here we are, you know, Richie, myself and Kirk, and we're all, we're dividing it up and we're all wiring, you know, 120 something, whatever it was, thousand dollars to Russia. To, to a numbered Swiss bank account. <laughs> you must have thought we'd ever see this again. <laughs> well, well, you know, see, Richie, Richie still possesses like the first dollar he made, you know, so <laughs> he, he still got it. But it, so, so Richie, Richie was real. Richie was, Richie was beside himself. He's like, parting with this much money other than buying a house. This is about as much money as you can, you can, you know, put down on something. You know, we're 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 all we're sending in three separate payments. We're all sending our, our our money to this numbered Swiss bank account. So Richie calls me up. He's like, "I did it." I said, "You did what, Richie?" I sent my money. I was like, "What money?" He's like, "I sent the money for for Titanic to the numbered Swiss bank account to the Russians." I was like, "Richie, <laughs> you didn't really do that, did you? We were just kidding." And you know, it, it, I only got him for a couple of seconds, but I, I'm pretty sure his heart stopped. He must have gone very quiet on his end of the phone at that moment. Having having been to Britannic, you know, and, and the, the histories of, of both Titanic and Britannic, the Olympic class ships being very, uh, you know, they, they, they're linked. They, you know, I don't know how you extricate one one from the other. So it was something I was already familiar with. It was, it was some, something I, I, I already had an interest in. And, uh, um, I, you know, I didn't need much of a, a push as, as Richie said, Richie's like, well, this is either going to be, this is going to be great. Uh, um, even if it's just the most expensive wreck dive we've ever been on. <laughs> it's like, how do, you, how do you, um, I mean, if I'm sitting there like tonight, I might say to my other half, I'll say to Jane while we're sitting there, Oh, by the way, I'm just going, I'm going diving tomorrow. I'm going to go off the coast. Um, and you know, going with Craig, we're, we're just going to have a little dive off the coast. Um, and she'll say, "Oh, that's nice. What time are you going to be back? Did yeah. Did you have that same thing with? Oh, I'm going to the Titanic on Saturday. Um, I don't know what time I'll be back." And she says, "Oh, that's nice. What, what time shall I do dinner for?" Well, <laughs> uh, my wife, my wife at the time, my ex-wife of the future, did uh, did. She was not a diver. And and I fully realized that that was advantageous to me <laughs> because there there were a lot of things that I could just kind of you know kind of gloss over yeah and I you know I'd get a oh that's nice kind of thing but that's, that's what I'm saying but you can't do that with that's you don't do that with Titanic whether you're a diver or not you don't just go oh that's nice that's right. what I mean how do you just say oh by the way I'm going to Titanic at the weekend yeah. Uh, um, you know, it is, you know, obviously it, it takes a lot of like preparation and all that kind of stuff, but it, it's also, you know, I mean, in many ways it was, it was just another wreck time, you know? And, and I mean, you, you know, we, we did, when we finished Titanic, we were like, oh, that was pretty good. But the next year we chartered, uh, uh, the Keldish and the mere submersibles and we were going to Bismarck. Um, because Titanic worked worked out really well for for History Channel and all that, and we and and, and we were like, oh, you know, Bismarck might be kind of cool. And, but the Keldish, they they took the mere submersibles and planted the the Russian flag up on Gackle Ridge, and they they, they kind of got out of the the Titanic business. The the yeah. reason, and, and again, you know, I mean, we talked about timing before, and, and it's. You know, I, I mean, it's nobody really went to Titanic for 
you know, over a decade uh, a after that because, you know, the, the, nobody, w where's your ride? Yeah. Nobody, nobody, nobody was going. You, you could, you could, with, with cash in your hand. Yeah. There was, there, there's no submersibles to, uh, you know. So I think, John, we should just explain at this point to those that don't know, sort of just to bring people up to speed that up until that point, the Russians with two submersibles, MER 1 and MER 2, were actually doing tourist trips where people with the bucks could pay and go down and see Titanic. And your, expedition came in towards the very end of of that so you've now chartered the ship and you're on board and you're you're sitting overhead of of uh, titanic you've never been in a submersible i presume certainly not down to the sort of depth that that titanic's at you're now out of control everything we've been talking about before you had 100 percent control of whether it went bad and how you dealt with an issue how did it feel for you that first time you got in the sub, knowing the sort of depth you're getting down to and knowing it was built by the Russians? That Those submarines weren't new. They were old yeah. technology then when you did that. What did that feel like? Well, you know, the, 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 the Russians... The, the Russians were, were setting up these trips to Titanic and they, they were they're pretty much doing back-to-back -back trips. And without exception, it was, uh, it was TV stuff. Each TV expedition, typically speaking, they, they'd fill in, pick up a couple of extra bucks by putting a couple of tourists in the submersible to, right. to, to help pay the bills. But it's like you get you get in the mere submersible and it, it is the, 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 you know, submersible diving, you are very technologically dependent. 6,000, more than 6,000 PSI of, of pressure outside the, the mere submersible. So uh, I, I could go and say how many uh, a bar that is, but it, it's a lot of bar. It, it, it's probably like 400 bar, something like that. We, we, we hired, you know, a, a, a crew. We, we brought a film crew, put a film crew together and the cinematographer we hired was was uh, Ralph White and and Ralph is diving in the submersible with Richie this is Richie's first Titanic dive Ralph at that point had probably like 32 Titanic dives and but you know I mean it, it's like you know the pressure outside the submersible is is 6,000 psi if there is a breach in the pressure hull you, uh, you're not even you're not even going to it, things are going to happen so fast, you, you know, that's it. You're done. And, and the, the, the problem are the things that, that all of the, you know, it's, it's not the pressure hull. It's the, the through hull connections that connect your, you to the, to the power, to, to everything outside, to the manipulators and all that kind of stuff. So literally, Richie and Ralph are coming down and they're, and they're getting and, and you know, you're looking through the, the plate. And, and of course, you're in like a, a, an incredibly, you know, uncomfortable position The the drop, the descent to the wreck is like two and a half hours. So so it's like, you know, this is this is something you leave the surface and it's and it's, you know, you kind of cocoon because energy, energy is power. It translates into time. So, so the thing is, you know, you want, you know, you turn all the lights off and you're just dropping through the water column. And then and also, because it takes so long to get down two and a half hours, you said, are yeah. all of these thoughts going through your mind about oh. the pressure and the increase in pressure and, and all of the mechanics that potentially could fail because it's aging equipment. For, for us, it was also, oh, okay, we just, we just spent, you know, we were now like over four hundred thousand dollars in in the hole to go to go wreck dive, and you know, and it's like you know, it's it's like we really, you know, for us, it's really important to try and you know, are we going to be able to make something out of this? We can't afford to go down there and look at the fish, you know. So it's so it's like, okay, we're dropping through the water calm. Richie's Richie's in the submersible with with Ralph White. I was in the the other the other mirror submersible. Richie's down there, and it's like they, they they land very close to the bow, and and Richie, you know they 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 you know they're turning the lights on, everything's happening, and Richie is like, there it is, Titanic. 
you know. And he, he's getting all like he's he's trying to like you know get all personal and emotional and all that. Uh, um, but he's he's looking out the viewport. He's like, this is this is this is it. I'm in twelfth. Ralph White reaches into his pocket, pulls out a little tiny squirt gun, and shoots Richie right in the back of the head. <laughs> and Richie's like, "There's a no, what's that?" <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you know it, it is you know those kind of dives yeah you know it's 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 a big deal it's big it's business and um the 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 russian mindset and perspective is somewhat different than than uh the american mindset and they're much they're they're much happier doing without so you know you, you've got all the instrument panel and everything's everything's going on and you know and, and right you know you've got an opening with nothing in it. You're like, oh, what goes in there? No problem, it's broken. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Do, are we going to need that? <laughs> so you're traveling down, and it's taking you two and a half hours. You've got all of these thoughts going through your mind of all the mechanics, the things that are missing that should be there or potentially were there once, you're, you're dropping down and take, I mean, it's interesting to hear that you say it's just another wreck. So if you take out that emotional side of it, there's two thoughts there for me is that you're dropping down and as soon as you drop down, you've had all these, this time to think and that first time you saw Titanic still must have been, wow. Or was it just another wreck? I don't. Well, I don't to I, me, it'd be wow. I, me I have to say, I have to say, but because because I'm, you know, it's it's for me, you know, I I like having a job. I like having a mission. Uh, you know, it's like okay, what are we? We're doing something. What is it? You know, and, and uh, you know, if if I got nothing to do, what's the point? So so literally, did you not take a pack of cards with you on the way down? <laughs> No, as a matter, but uh, you know, guys are like you know listening to iPods and uh, you know trying to like you know you, you leave the surface as soon as you get in the mirror because they're charging everything up. It it's hot. It's it's like ninety something degrees. So you you know you go in there with the you're wearing the hero suit and you know the 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 uh, fire retardant Nomex suit, and the first thing you do is take it off. <laughs> because it's so it's so hot, so everybody's sitting around in their underwear, and as you're dropping through the water column, you know o over over the next you know ten twelve hours things start getting cold. Get cold. So so that you know you as as it goes on, you know you start out in your in your underwear, but you end up with every piece of clothing and a wool hat and like because it's because it's cold and it's and it's damp. But uh, um. You know, when, when, when I have to say, when, when, you know, when I saw the wreck, it was like time to go to work. And, and, and then it's, it's being like the wreck diver and well, you know, what about this and what about that? And, 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 you know, you want, you want, the, you want the pilot to do certain stuff and, and it, you know, the, the ocean doesn't always let you do that. Yeah. So specifically, what you're talking about there is now investigating David Concannon's theory and yeah. looking. You're, you, the second you're there, now you're. Let's look for the evidence. And, yeah. and so, what did you find? Um, it it didn't work out. What what David Concannon? You know, one of the interesting things about the the the, the deep ocean is, is that things don't change down there much. You, you know, if if you uh, if if I'm diving a wreck in, in in New Jersey, and I dive it this year, and I come back next year. You know, the the sand the sand looks the same. Things kind of look the same, but it, it, it's like you know, it's it, it all it all changes in the deep ocean. Every submersible that has touched down in the sand since the wreck was discovered in the 1980s, there's still a mark, you know, in the sand where where the wreck set down. The nautil. Uh, uh, the French submersible that was going out to Titanic, the Nautil used a system of buoyancy. The, the mirrors were kind of sophisticated in that they had ballast 
uh, cylinders. They pump water in or, or, or uh, uh, pump water out of those ballast tanks to, to, to get their buoyancy. Obviously, you want to be negative on the drop, and then you want to be close to neutral or slightly uh, uh, negative while you're, uh, during the bottom phase of the dive, and then you want to be positively buoyant on, on the ascent. So, so Nautil used to, to uh, attach a bunch of steel weights to the submersible and, and they drop but because it, it, it's very fairly complicated pumping water in and out of cylinders when the, the ambient pressure is like, you know, 6,000 PSI. So, so it's like they would, they, they would get to the bottom and they would release the steel weights and then they'd go and they'd do whatever they were doing on the bottom. And then when it came to have a t time to leave, they had a second set of steel weights that they would drop. So over multiple dives, you, you'd be down there and you'd, you'd be finding these pieces of steel that were dropped by Nautil. And you could see where the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the struts uh, uh, had left their marks in the sand, so things don't change much. So David Concanon was was pretty uh, uh, pretty much capable of getting us to the location where he was previously, <clears throat> and it, and it wasn't what he thought it was. And, and it's like you know, I mean, I get it. And it, it, you know, what is what is the problem with that? Well, the problem with that is. He didn't have a chance to fully, if he, if he could have fully vetted his idea previously, well then, you know, we, we never would have gone anywhere and done anything. So, you know, there was, he, he thought he was looking at one thing and it didn't pan out. So he, he thought he'd found evidence. Yeah, no. He, to suggest he, that the theories about this, the, how Titanic sank yeah. were very different and he'd found evidence to prove it was a different way, but that was the whole reason for your trip. His, his what he thought he had found was was where uh, Titanic had had run up onto the iceberg and literally had been. It, it didn't. It, it wasn't a glancing blow. It was. It was like literally it gouged out the very bottom of 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 Titanic, and that's why it, it, it sank so quickly. So the only problem is after one Titanic dive, we were like, okay, our basic premise here is gone. What's plan B? <laughs> what's, that's exactly it. What, you know, what's, what's plan B? Yeah. And literally we're, we're, you know, we're, we're spitballing what plan, plan B is. And, and in that, in that process, we had brought with us a bunch of guys from Woods Hole Oceanographic from, from the, the, you know, the, we had their cameras set up on the mirrors and they, they had some pretty sophisticated stuff. Billy Lang was, was their guy and he'd been to, you know, Titanic a few, he'd never actually been to Titanic, but he, he'd worked Titanic expeditions before. And we were like, you know, what, what do you think, Billy? And uh, he's like, uh, you know what? If I were you, I'd go to the east. Why? There's a whole bunch of stuff out there that nobody knows what it is. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. Nobody knows what it is. But you know, we're either going to look at the stuff that everybody's already seen, or do you want to look at something different? So, what sort of distance away from the bow and the bits that people are familiar with are we talking about? Very uh, close by right to the east. Uh, a couple hundred yards. Right, but it's just you know, been ignored because people want to see that. Pe people want to see the big, the big wreckage, and, right. and, and you know, and Billy, you know, I mean, Billy, Billy was was like, you know, afterwards we were like, okay, you know what? Let, let's try and come up with some target areas. It, 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 you know, in the east, we're gonna we're gonna drop both mirrors uh, uh, on the eastern. In, in this eastern de debris area, and let's let's see what we can come up with. Then Billy tells us he's like, you know, I've been on, I forget how many Titanic expeditions. He's like, you know, I've worked on, uh, you know, shot video for you know, Woods Hole Oceanographic for like you know o over twenty years. He's like, but nobody nobody ever asked me what I think. I'm like, 
<laughs> Don't tell me that now. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but and, and we went out there and literally. I don't, I don't I don't think we were we were 10 minutes on the bottom and and, and literally um in in the mirror that I was in we found uh, um a, a section of Titanic's hull upside down in other words you could the, it still had the red hull paint on it uh, um it was it, it, you know Having been on Britannic on the the break in Brit Britannic, I knew exactly what that that uh, 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 the 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 bottom of the, uh, Britannic looked like. And when I looked at Titanic, I was like, oh, yeah, this, I, I know exactly what this is. And even before we we saw the bilge keel or any of that stuff. So and, this, and this is not just a small broken off bit. This is a a beam to beam whole section out of the middle of the boat. And it, it is literally, you know, I mean, we, we didn't necessarily know. We, we knew it was, we knew it was a hull section. The other mirror, which was very close to us, said, oh, we think we're on the same piece of wreckage because that's we, we just found a piece. And, we're, and we're, we're like we're like going around. We're like, we don't see you. And they're like, where are you know? And we figure out we're actually on two sections. But the thing is, you know, when when we we documented everything, we we you know made drawings, made measurements, turned it all over to engineers, and you know, like you know, when they're talking to guys like me, you know, whether there are forces that push and there are forces that pull. I felt like I was watching like the the children's show version. <laughs> Sure. Uh, but you know that they, they could they literally these these were the sections as as titanic started to break apart on the surface these were the sections of hull that broke out came down to the bottom and of course obviously when you, you you're losing a, a a large large section of the hull more than 10 percent of the hull it's a, the water just rushes in and and the and the ship sink. But it, it you know it's it's one of those things that you know we knew it was important in that you know part of the whole thing was you know when Titanic sank there were there were two uh, uh, big investigations the Mercy uh, 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 Commission uh, in uh, the UK and there was a Senate investigation in the United States of America so. Right. It, 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 and they both concluded that the ship did not break apart. Yeah. A, a, and so it, you know, I mean, that prior to that, that was still subjective. Like, did it break apart? Did it? Did some of the witnesses said it did. Some of the witnesses said it didn't. They were, you know, the the uh, uh, the engineering side of things could not could not have broken up. Could not yeah. have broken up. So, well, Harlan and Wolf. Obvious, for obvious reasons, were very determined that no one ever thought their ships weren't strong enough. This is the heyday of transatlantic, two, yeah. three hundred thousand people a year, growing to two million people a year crossing the Atlantic. It was, you know, they couldn't afford that supposition that the hulls weren't strong enough. Well, you know, exactly. But the thing is, you're describing this. When it's really, it's really this, but because and if if you if you put it in historical context, it's like okay, this this is April fifteenth, nineteen twelve. Okay, where what else is going on in the world? Well, this is literally the end of the Edwardian era. You know, the Edwardian era, was like 1901, uh, you know, prior to that, it was the, the Victorian era. The, so, but, you know, people had, Victorian era was kind of the, the beginning of, of things like politics, the suffragette w uh, movement, women getting the, the vote. There was liberal thought, uh, um, inventions like the airplane. Uh, um, things like that. So, so there's all of, you know, the the Edwardian era was this this time of great potential. Within all of that, you've got 
the the Harlan Wolf is is building the the Olympic class ships to compete with Lusitania and Mauritania. Cunard's line. It's Cunard. White Star and Cunard. Yeah, White, White Star and Cunard. But Cunard was still the 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 you know they 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 were the fastest passenger ships on the on this on the sea. Now all of a sudden with this this Edwardian enlightenment the 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 white star taps into this it's not about speed it's about comfort it's about it, it's not about being the fastest one it's about being the the most reliable titanic was the was the this was the biggest object ever made by man yeah at the at the time and it's like so so it it doesn't it's not just the ship it's it's a it's a concept of of the times that the people were were living in you know and it's like it, it is like you know the edwardian age is kind of it, you know it, it it is it is ending and the next thing up is world war one so so you know it's it, there is this certain uh, you know, people are somewhat unsure about, you know, they, they could see war in, in Europe, you know, starting. And it's like, you know, the, 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 they, that was on the horizon. But it's like, so, so people, people put a lot into Titanic emotionally. They invested emotionally, absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's like, and that, the, the, the context of Titanic was an incredibly big deal yeah but but the, the the key thing is the evidence that you found and were able to bring to light with the videos and and, yeah. and the analysis that was done on that dispelled a theory that had been in place for a hundred years yeah no and it and again it's it's like okay well it sank differently okay carry carry that over and you say, how does that relate to the human experience? You know, and and, and they 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 talk about you know the Titan Titanic sank. There were uh, seven hundred some odd survivors. Fifteen hundred people lost their lives. But there was you know there there were there were almost eight hundred empty seats in the lifeboats. So so the thing is, it's it's like well. You know why? Why were people not getting into the lifeboats? Well, they didn't think Titanic was going to sink, and and they they didn't they did not have engineering approach to shipping of of the era was these big ships. They were their own lifeboats. You didn't need the little small boats. So people were saying, well, you know, why why should I get into the the, the little small lifeboat? You know, uh, I'm, I'm a, and, and uh, you know the the experience of of being on the ship and the ship is going down by the bow, and, and at some point it it actually breaks in two. Now, you know, the engineers who looked at this, we 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 did a a really comprehensive flooding study. Titanic was not a weak ship. It's it's not like oh you know it was built it with the steel was bad or you know any of the things where it's like Titanic was uh, uh, broke apart and somebody was at fault. It's just it's just a matter of of the 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 engineering. It's a matter of physics. It's a matter of of forces. Titanic held up better than any modern ship gets built today. You know the, the the engineering standards, the structural integrity of the ship. It's just that you know the the very unlikely uh, uh, position. Titanic was really made to to if it ran into an iceberg, it, it was going to stay afloat. But the, the concept of a, a grazing blow that floods six compartments where the ship was only designed. To, you you could flood five compartments and it will stay afloat. Oh yeah, well they flooded six. Oh no, it's not going to stay afloat. And, and it's just you know how unlike you know talking about you know the ruby 
I was, I was then going to say exactly the same thing. How, how unlikely, you know, the, the maiden voyage hits an iceberg, a glancing blow, just, you know, a certain way. It's, it starts to flood. And, and you know, when, when you look at uh, um, everything that contributes to that, with the crew did, what the engine department, uh, engineering department did, what the, what the guys in the wheelhouse did, and you start to dissect each and every aspect of this. Uh, um, it's it's absolutely fascinating. It's 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 very it's very difficult to let go of that you know that Edwardian concept that you know no we you know there were people who said Titanic was just too big. It was doomed to fail because man can't build things that big. But they did also, the, the original specification was for one inch plate and inch rivets, and they downgraded that and made it a uh, seven eighths rivet, uh, no, inch and a quarter plate, and yeah. they made it out of inch plate, and yeah. it was one inch rivets, and they made it out of seven eighths. And, and also, it was designed to flex, and that they believe now is where they got it wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, uh, the design specifications uh, 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 changed because uh, 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 um, Thomas Andrews was uh, Thomas, Thomas Andrews was was an amazing uh, uh, engineer and, and designer, but he also he he was like the epitome of of uh, uh, the the Edwardian citizen. He he was literally worshipped. By the the crew who served aboard uh, uh, the, the uh, Olympic class ships, both both Olympic and, and Titanic, because for the first time the the crews were actually given staterooms, where you know you'd have four crew members sleeping in a stateroom, as opposed to just open berthing and hammocks. So this was this was part of the Edwardian concept. Of, of of the liberal ideas and and you know uh, how can we make things better? The members of the crew actually came up to him and said, "I you know I really I have a life now because of you." They loved him, and so things like you know taking taking the the thickness of the hull plates from an inch and a quarter down to an inch, and you know removing some of the structural steel and all that kind of stuff. That's fairly common in shipbuilding and and of course the the whole thing came down to uh, um you know that the, the more it weighs the more fuel you got to shovel into the engines the more it weighs the more steel we we have to purchase to build to build the ship so you know it's like how can we cut costs would that have made a difference yeah you know, I, I i don't i don't know so the two sections of hulls that you found yeah. then dispelled the Hollywood version of the 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 towel up in the air, the stern at forty five degrees. It, yeah. it they reckon in, in eleven degrees was the figure, I believe, before yeah. it started breaking up yeah. on the surface. Ten, ten, ten to ten to eleven degrees. Which, which ten to eleven degrees? People, the, the human experience is is going to be entirely different. Uh, uh, um, so if it, if it's if it's if it's ten degrees, you're like, uh, you know, wow! I hope they get here soon. Forty five degrees, you, you realize you yeah, you are doomed. Yeah, and yeah. and the thing is, once 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 the 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 bottom pieces broke out, that was it. It was you know, it was it, yeah, it, it was it was done. And and if you if you look at the two sections of, of wreckage, you, you've got the bow section and you've got the stern section. The bow was already full of water because the bow was flooding. So you've got the six six compartments up at, uh, up in the bow. They're all they were underwater. And they were full of water, and when the bow went down, it went down relatively fast and and, and straight. When the stern went down. The, the, because the, the the stern only you know uh, 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 you know the forwardmost section of the stern had water in it, and, and then the the as it starts heading to the bottom very rapidly, 
you, you, the air can't escape fast enough. So literally, by the time the stern hits the bottom, it's it's you know it it, it everything just comes undone. You know, it, it was the the compression. It, it hits the bottom very hard, and all that stuff is is weakened. With the the two pieces of the hull that fell out, the human experience is is entirely different that's what they tell us you, you know they were they were uh, uh, you know legend have it if you look at uh, a night to remember it was you know it's like everyone sees the end coming and the the you know the band is playing on on the on the deck and uh, uh, um it, it it's all that and, and that that's one reality that's tied into that you know, we all see the the end is coming, and and it, it wasn't really like that. You know, the, the the musicians were probably playing because they're like, you know, we, you know, we're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Interesting, because in Ismay, who who was the owner of the shipyard, yeah. Harlan Wolf, in his statement, he he's questioned about why he was on the lifeboat. There's women and children still on the ship. And why is he on the lifeboat and they're not? And in his answer to that question, he said, because no one wanted a space. No one wanted to get off the big ship and get in the little boat. They, they yeah. just never believed for a second that that big boat would be going down. And that yeah. exactly matches what you just said. Yeah. And he, he, he paid for that, you know, but it, it's, it's like people did not want to get into the lifeboats. You know, first of all, getting into the lifeboat was kind of like a scary operation in in the first place. Now they had very good weather conditions, but still, you know what? These are your choices: get into the little tiny ice boat and go float around the ship with all of the icebergs and stuff floating around in the or, cold. In the cold, or we could go to the bar and have a brandy. You pick <laughs> one. Number <laughs> two. You know, it, it is, it is, and when we think about what's happening with, with the individuals, you, you know, the, the White Star Line, and of course, part of, part of the Edwardian era, what was, you, you know, the, 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 uh, 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 the, the explosion of trade unions, you know, in, in other words, the, 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 you know, it's, it's this, this concept of like, you know, better working conditions and all that, which Thomas Andrews was, was all, all, all in on, but that the white star line to, to, to keep from having to pay the musicians in the band, the union rate, it, it listed them as second class passengers and then kind of like, but, you know, paid, paid them you know, differently than, than the union would have uh, required, you know, a after it's all said and done and, uh, you know, none of, none of the member, the band members sur survived, but they, uh, uh, the families of the band members were sent bills by the white star line for uniforms, not returned, you know? So, so it's like, you know, when you start, when you start, when you start to get into this and, and you start thinking about, you know, here's here's these here's these guys. You know, they're going to work. They're 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 doing what they can to feed their family. Uh, um, it, it is you know, it's it's this it's this new age of of, of trade unions and, and and you know now crew members actually have have a stateroom as opposed to to just sleeping in a hammock in a in an open area and all these things. And then all of a sudden. All of that is gone. You know, that, that's the, 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 the real, you know, that end of an era right before World War I. It is, you know, I mean, that's why we, we think about this and, and we look at it and we analyze it and we, we think about the human experience and all that uh, um, that really makes it fascinating. And, and you know, we can keep... There's so many different aspects to the story. Yeah. So looking back, John, I mean, uh, when you went and dived down to the Titanic, it was for you was just a job um, and you, you were going there for a specific reason. Oh, no. It, 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 we, 
I just wanted, I, just, I was like, you know what? It, it, I, I don't care who you are. You're a wreck diver? Oh, Titanic? So you <laughs> have a chance to go to Titanic. You want to do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to yeah. say, I mean, looking back now, you must feel incredibly honored because there's more people, more human beings have been in space than have been down and seen the Titanic in its resting place. And you are one of those guys. That must, that's a, that's something to tell the grandkids that one. Well, well you know, the, it, it, yeah. And, and I, there was a TV producer who, who, who said more, you know, fewer people have been to Titanic than, than, uh, um, are dead on Mount Everest. Everest, you know, yeah. and, and and I'm like, well, how many people is that? And they're like, oh, I don't know, we don't have exact. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure how, how accurate any any of that is, but it, it's like, oh no, for for me, this and for and for Richie too. This this was purely selfish. We tried to dress this up as a business proposition. <laughs> Just so that, like you know, uh, uh, we we wouldn't get in trouble at at, at home, and, and uh, you know, it, it's. But, well, I believed you. <laughs> well, you, you know, the thing is that the, you know, I mean, we'd already paid for this. Mm. You know, essentially, uh, you know, R Richie, Richie, and I did did very well on uh, uh, Shadow Divers. We we were we were doing well with with TV. Uh, um, we were in a position that we could come up with that kind of money. A and it's like, you know, our attitude was like, well, you know what? Easy come, easy go. At the very worst case scenario, we're diving the most famous wreck in the world. A and, yeah. you know, for guys that have like, oh, you've been to the Andrea Doria. It's like, yeah, uh, uh, you know, Andrea Doria, Titanic? No, no. Yeah. But, but John, I would love to hear that after all the investment, I understand that, but when you got back and you had that footage and you found what you found uh, and and you've now got something to go back to the TV companies and the film companies, yeah. I really want to hear that it ended up financially, that it was at least a success of it. Oh, yeah. oh no, absolutely. Absolutely. No, we, 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 made, we made lemonade from lemons. You know, <laughs> it, it is... It is uh, a, 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 it, we ended up uh, with with two two programs on Titanic, and they sent us back to Britannic. They were <laughs> like, "Oh, you know what, my man? You know, you guys talk about Britannic a lot. Maybe we could do something with Britannic." We go, "Yeah, we could go back there." Okay, well, we're back to Britannic another time with a rebreather that was really good this time. Yeah, but it, it, it you, you know it is we did, and we actually won a couple of awards. Some, somewhere back around over there, there's some, you know, awards that, the, you know, for, for industry awards for, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the shows that we, we, we put on. And, yeah. and, and it's like, you know, all, all that stuff was, was great. But really? Oh, no. It was, it was about, like, I just, I just want to do it. I want yeah. to figure out how it all works, and we just want to go and, act, and actually be there. And Fantastic. well done for doing it. I mean, yeah. honestly, it's, it's it's an amazing story, isn't it? Like Craig said, we could talk for hours about it, and I'm sure you have spoken about it for hours. I just wanted to mention a couple of other things. Um, obviously, you just mentioned Shadow Divers there and Pirate Hunters, two books, you know, are based on things that you've done. Would you just like to tell us a little bit about the, the German U-boat in the Shadow Divers? Well, you know, Shadow, shadow Divers is uh, that you know the story of, of shadow divers we you know diving diving air you know right before uh, um guys started diving helium and we were experimenting with things like helium guys would guys would put like five percent helium in their tank and and you know dive down how how was it was it was it magical did it, was it the difference between black and white and color <laughs> you know and guys go like man and you know our, our problem was we had Navy tables for air, but we didn't have any tables for, for healing. Yeah. So, so it, you know, and, and we all we knew was that the decompression profiles were going to be different. How different? Uh, we had no idea. And, of course, we, we had no, not having dive planners, we couldn't accelerate our decompression using nitrox. So it was like 230-foot air dives. You know, go down, go down to the to the to the wreck. It's a mystery submarine, 
and, and you know, you can go to the same place twice and you're like, oh no, look, I saw entirely different things. Why? Because well, you breathe in air into it. Yeah, because you're yeah. talking on air. That's why. <laughs> uh, um, but it, you know, it was it, it it was historically speaking, we thought we'd have it identified in in two weeks, and it, it turned into a a bigger story, a bigger mystery. It turned into a real journey. Uh, um, there there were uh, you know a, a total of three fatalities uh, uh, on the second. Uh, uh, Steve Feldman lost lost his life, uh, deep water blackout, and uh, the Rouses. The the Rouses, a father a father and son dive team, uh, uh, you know that basically came to the surface, and, and both with serious serious decompression sickness. Y you know, so this was not only this this was a very dangerous wreck, and, and but it was it was also a mystery. Which which wreck is it? Obviously, we knew it was a German U boat. Second dive on the wreck, I, I brought up some uh, China with, on the bottom was the eagle and swastika and all that. Uh, um, so it was, you know, we knew it was a German U-boat. The question was, which one? You know, w working with, with Richie, I think, I think Richie's motivation, you know, Richie likes to, to uh, embrace his, his German heritage. And I think he was really very much motivated and inspired to get the identity because to, to put a name on the tombstone. Um, Craig Craig is doing another podcast later on um, uh, in a week or so's time with a friend of ours called Matt. And they're going to be doing it just on dive books. So we don't want to say too much about Shadow Divers or Pirate Hunters because that may feature in one of those. But um, that's an amazing story, isn't it? And how that came about, as well as Pirate Hunters. Sorry, Craig, were you going to say something different? Yeah, well, similar on the same lines as you, Jim. I was going to say that that we want to not talk too deeply about either of these two because not only as as Fris just said, am I doing this book feature with uh, uh, one of my friends uh, who, who, like me, loves reading? But also, I want to get you back on, John, with your permission, and do a Shadow Divers uh, um, episode, so to speak, where we can talk in depth about that because it is such a fascinating subject that the the the, the, the mystery went on for years, as you were about yeah. to to say there um so yeah if we could just touch on, on pirate hunters as well that was a a, a whole different episode in a, a very different environment uh, well pi pirate hunters is is really about uh, the the uh, it, you know for me as a wreck diver you know in most of my wreck diving career i was like a big steel guy it, you know it's like no i'm uh Andrew doria i'm inside the wreck uh britannic i'm inside the wreck you know Lusitania, it, it, harder, but it's like you know, it's like oh, you know, where 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 can we get inside the wreck? It, it, it's like that, you know. That's now a, a colonial period wrecks in in the Caribbean. It's like oh no, that's completely different, and and that's the thing that really kind of drew me to it was the fact that it's all about finding where the wreck is, even if you can't see it. And, and that, you, you know, the, dealing with uh, history, you know, go, going back 400 years, it is, is a lot different than dealing with World War I wrecks or World War II wrecks. And, and um, it's, it's just, it's another aspect. It, it's why uh, um, you know, after all these years, Rick, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm still involved. I'm still uh, um, inspired. I'm still, I'm still motivated. You know, we're 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 trying to go back to the Dominican Republic again, but uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was also our incredibly good fortune to to be involved with with Rob Curson, who wrote both Shadow Divers and Pirate Hunters. And Rob's a, a brilliant writer, a good guy, a, a, a very good friend of mine. And uh, let me just say that, you know, anybody, anybody who's a diver, you should read both of these books, but don't go get them through the library. Go buy them. Put your money down because, uh, I, you know, I've 100 percent. I've, I've got a family to feed. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you spent too much on Titanic. <laughs> hey, you know, we end, we ended up we ended up making money on Titanic, and, and, and you know, it was it was not we did not make much money on Titanic, but it was like for us, it was like uh, we were like, oh boy, we really. You know, we made lemonade from lemons on that one. But, yeah. uh, um, you, you know, it, it is, if you are, it, it's not adventure if you if you really know how everything's going to turn out in the end. And, and, and it's like, you know, I mean, it, you know, you may have a, a plan and you may look for this and that. You, 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 you. You know, you want to find what what you're looking for, but the thing is, sometimes you don't know what that is. Hmm. You know, you you find the ruby because it's there, and, and and you could tell it was it was something different. But yeah. it, it, it's and, and you know, so for Titanic, we we went looking for something, and we had no idea what it was, and, and literally, we we were not. We did not know what we were, you know, in our, our, our second, our second dives, we did not know what we were looking for. And, and, and literally we found, when we found something, it, you know, we, we knew, it, we knew exactly what it was. The only thing that we, we struggled to comprehend was the fact that we'd found two sections. And, and, and it's, and then of course, later on that those two sections, you know, the engineers were to put you know, we make drawings from the video and then the, the two sections we could see which section, yeah. how they yeah. it, they matched up exactly. And then, you know, there's there's compression and tension and all that kind of stuff the engineers talk about. But, uh, yeah. um, you know, that's that's what's that's what's truly interesting about this stuff is is you're never really sure how it's going to turn out in the end. And that's kind of the way life is. You know, how, how is this whole thing going to turn out? I don't know. <laughs> well, hopefully it turns out that that we can get over to Florida and get out and do a bit of diving with you when all this craziness has uh, has gone. What's next for for you, John? Um, well, you know, I'm I'm typically the guy who likes to tell you what I've already done as opposed to what I'm going to do because yeah, uh, um, too, there, too many guys say, "Oh, I'm going to do this," you know, I, I, "I'm going to be an astronaut," or a uh, you know brain surgeon. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is, we're working on a couple things for, uh, for, uh, 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 television and we're, uh, trying to get back into the Dominican Republic. If you've read pirate hunters, we, we have, we definitely have unfinished business there, you know, maybe a, a, a couple of other things going on. One never knows. We were supposed to go to the Andrea Dory again this year, but because of the, uh, pandemic, yeah. Yeah. You can't, you, you can't really get there without going through New York city. So it's, it's like in yeah. New York city clearly did not want us, but, um, the, you know, well, next year we're, we're trying to get to the Andrea Doria next summer, but I, I have to say one thing right behind Craig, right behind Craig's left ear on the railing, right on the bow of Titanic. I have spent this entire interview Looking at that, no, you just moved your head right in front of it. Look, no, see, see, see the see the little the little plant growing mm -hmm. growing up right on the right on the bow. That that yeah. Little, yeah, there you go. That little the little plant at the very top on the top railing. Just go right there, right there. That has its own Facebook page. Just so you guys know. <laughs> I'll be looking for that. <laughs> it, it's 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 famous, you know. There are people who don't know I'm on Facebook, but they know that little that little a little piece of. <laughs> well, talking about Facebook, and <coughs> up there we got JohnChatterton.com. Something we should mention is, and you only briefly touched on it earlier, is you do a lot of training, don't you? Um, you know, I, I'm not sure that I would say a lot. I, I generally speaking, I'm, I'm you know I have other stuff that. I, I'm doing, but typically on a typical year in the spring and fall, I, I, I run uh, uh, um, advanced dive classes. If it's uh, someone you like, <laughs> well, it, you know, I do get, I do, I do like it when I get somebody that I've already had 
you know, as a student diver and, and they come back, it, it's like, you know, I, I can, I know that, I know what I got to work with, but, uh, uh, you know, it is, and I don't, I don't like taking people I don't know in like advanced trimix, like, come on, we're going in 300 foot of water. Like we're going to the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, it, you know, I, I have, I got, I was a, a, an NASDS and a NAWI instructor in like 1987. So for me, I have, I have always enjoyed uh, uh, um, teaching it. And I, you know, I, I, I'm, I've been an instructor for NASDS, NAWI, uh, 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 IENTD, uh, uh, TDI, uh, SSI. Um, and you know, diving has been very good to me. Uh, um, teaching is a good way for me to uh, uh, show my appreciation and and, and you know uh, help uh, help the dive divers in the dive community that have been very supportive of me. So pass awesome. on that knowledge and experience, of course. Yeah, and it, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say there aren't days where I'm shaking my head, going, "What the <laughs> hell was this guy thinking?" You know, but it, it you know, it, 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 every, every day is not a fresh bouquet of flowers. But at the same time, you know, uh, I have been incredibly fortunate in, in all the things I've been able to do, and. Um, you know, I can't imagine how my life would look if I actually had to work for a living. So <laughs> thank God I, I've, I've been able to like somehow, some way, teach diving, salvage shipwrecks, work for television instead of actually getting a real job. So well, I, I, and I, I, I speak for Craig as well, I'm sure, in saying that we'll, we feel fortunate that you've had such a great career and you've spoken to us about it. Okay, but you know it's not over yet, right? Don't don't be pushing me out the door. Like I've still got stuff to do. Yeah. <laughs> and and along those lines, we can't wait, John, to have you back and go into shadow divers in depth and talk about uh, uh, you know some other stuff that you've done, and and we really look forward to that. But but uh, as Frisch says, we really appreciate you spending a bit of time chatting to us and and you know letting people know. Um, some of the things that you've achieved and, and uh, you know, we can all live vicariously through what you've done. Well, um, thanks a lot. I, I uh, you know, it, it is it is fun to sit around and, and talk diving. I, I think you, you, I think you guys are great. And uh, I, I love the fact that I've been sitting here looking at the bow of Titanic behind Craig for the whole interview. It's like, uh, um, it, 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 for you me, got a mask on that. <laughs> no, no I don't, I'm not wearing a helmet either. <laughs> what you can't see is that I'm in a sphere. The pilot <laughs> is I'm facing the pilot. I'm the glass yeah. sphere is behind me. John, yeah. just two and a half hours ago, he was in his underwear. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I assume he is now. I can't, he just put a hoodie on. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, uh, uh, and I also know that like we, we did enough stuff that you can guys can edit out all the stupid stuff, so it, it sounds like you know, it sounds I'm much smarter than I really am. <laughs> Me too. I'm Greg. We're, we're much smarter than we look. Sounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, this is a, it's the miracle of uh, film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, if it wasn't nearly midnight here, John, I'd want to chat for hours more. Uh, now see, uh, this is the point where I, I should start torturing you guys. But, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, but listen, uh, yeah, we'll we'll do something for shadow divers and uh, and pirate hunters, and uh, God God forbid we uh, talk about something new with with uh, we we may we're trying to do something an, another book with Rob Kirsten. We'll see how it works. Oh, cool, excellent. Yeah, maybe you could give us a few hints when we chat about the other books. Uh, you know, maybe I don't, I don't like to give out too many details. I was doing a thing for T, and I'm telling them about this treasure wreck in, in the, the Dominican Republic, and they're like, "Well, exactly, where is this?" <laughs> that was my <laughs> <next> question. <laughs> I 
still want to know where this movie is, John. It, it's right. If you if you go to the pancake house and the the plate the paper place setting there, it's right where it says treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Big red X. Well, listen, right. you guys have a have a great evening and um I'll catch up with you guys later. Thank you. So, thank you very much, John. Great to see you. Good to see you guys. Have a good one. Take care.